The following message is from Dwayne the Mattress Guy from Mattress by Appointment Hillsborough. Hey Ryan, just calling in for Hoppy in the Morning. Your podcast's been killing it lately. Been loving it, been loving it. Got the good vibes going. Nice job. That's right, we're doing 50 to 80% off retail. We've got the $25 down plan. You've got to call me, text me. You know my number, 813-452-5555. We'll set up a private showing. Come take a look at all the queens that we have on display, but I've also got kings, foals, and twins. Whatever you like, we're taking on the same day. Just the other day, a guy was in, uh, Javain came in, uh, I think two weeks ago. He was looking for a king, got the mattress and the box spring. And, uh, he had a one o'clock appointment with me on, I think it was on a Thursday. And we had it in his bedroom before two o'clock. It was like 10 minutes to two. I was pulling up to his house. So, I mean, it's that easy. And, uh, you know, I take care of my people one on one. I don't have much employees. Yeah, 813-452-5555. Ryan, you're doing a good job there. Thanks a lot. Appreciate all your help. And that's why I loved uh, using, uh, Mattress by appointment to sponsor the podcast. Take Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. Oh, security! We met young Ryan Hoppy. Ryan. Okay, your name? Ryan Hoppy. Okay, Ryan Hoppy, where do you live? How are you tonight? Ah, so you're from the rich north suburbs. What's going on, Ryan Hoppy? This is Tony Rowe. Your buddy, Ryan Hoppy. <laughs> 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 no one knows who Ryan Hoppy is. You he's, never have to worry about offending Ryan Hoppy. Isn't he like seven foot tall? He's yeah. seven foot tall. He's and he's only a, he's a kid. He's right. a kid. He's, uh, he's got good mentors and he's motivated. Happy hour. Happy hour. Damn son, where'd you find this? He never holds back, and he speaks his mind. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. This, this, this should be played at high volume, preferably in a residential area. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in, too. Oh, yeah, what's going on? This is Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. Call the show. We are live on Spreaker, and we are live on Facebook Live. 856 856- 49 Hoppy. It's 856-494-6773. You can tweet at me at Ryan Hoppy Radio and you can always email me. Ryan Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. And like as you heard at the beginning of the show, this is being brought to you by Mattress by Appointment Hillsboro with Dwayne, the mattress guy. 813-452-5555. It's 813- Four five two five 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 five. All right, we have so much to get into, but I think it's time that we had an open discussion. I think it's time that we were honest with ourselves about how creepy this whole Jelaine Maxwell case is. Why is it that any other court case, literally, you have coverage by coverage by coverage? Over and over again, Johnny Depp, over and over again, but you don't get anything of Jelaine Maxwell. I think this is proof that there are a lot of elitists and there are a lot of people out there who are involved with going to that island and they are afraid to get exposed because it really creeps me out how there's no footage of her walking anywhere. When is the last time you saw Jelaine Maxwell? They have the drawings in the courtroom. I mean, they showed Derek Chauvin, showed Johnny Depp, they showed Casey Anthony. This would be the biggest case ever. It is so creepy because there's a headline here. Jelaine Maxwell will earn as little as 15 cents an hour cleaning toilets and washing dishes at the new Florida prison where she could become a target for other inmates unless she acts humbly and begins complaining. How... How do you even believe this? There's no proof that she's there. Think about it. When's the last time you saw anything from her? She has been moved to FCI Tallahassee, a low security prison in Florida where she will serve her 20 year sentence. How do we even know she's there? Daily Mail can reveal Maxwell will earn 15 to 27 cents an hour cleaning toilets. I mean, that's got to be weird if that's true. You literally go from being on top of the pedophile mountain. You are hanging out with every rich and elite person ever. And then all of a sudden, you're cleaning toilets. But then I was reading a report that this prison she's at allegedly is like nice. You know, like, I wouldn't want to be there, but this is like the bougier one. Like, 
Illinois governor, former Illinois governor, Rob Blagojevich, the one he went to? Yeah, this is a little similar. She was convicted of helping billionaire, I don't even want to say his name, abuse underage girls after a trial in December. I mean, don't you just think that would be the most damning thing ever? Oh my God, I'm scrolling down. And it, just her picture, her smile really creeps me out. Like, you know when somebody has a beautiful smile, but they have nothing there? Like, you know when somebody looks amazing, but they have nothing there? That is her. She just gives you the heebie-jeebies. It's like a cult. Prison consultants say Tallahassee would feel like Disneyland compared to other prisons. Yeah, I mean, she got the easiness out of this. I mean, I'm just saying, think about Good Morning America, Today Show, any of the shows. You interview Jelaine Maxwell. You could have her on the Joe Rogan podcast. Anything. We've never heard this woman talk. I'm just saying enough about that. That just really creeps me out that they're like telling us it's like you're reading the newspaper in 1920, essentially. Essentially, you got the little drawings there. And I mean, I've seen better drawings on the south side of Chicago with like spray paint on the walls. You know what I mean? I've seen graffiti that looks more accurate than her drawings. I saw this next headline. And oh boy, was I not surprised. When I saw this headline, you could not have gotten any other reaction out of me than, oh my God, Jojo Siwa is kind of a little brat. Jojo Siwa, age 19, claims Full House actress Candace Cameron Burr, 46, is the rudest celebrity ever, while she says Miley Cyrus is the nicest. Let me guess, Candace didn't say hi to you because she has no idea who the hell you are, but Miley Cyrus is getting a little bit older, so she needs to, you know, be able to relate to the next generation, so of course she's going to be nice to you, you give her clout, dummy. Oh my God, I am Jojo Siwa. I make the most aggravating music ever. And everybody should acknowledge my greatness. Jojo Siwa uploaded a new TikTok video to her 42.2 million followers this week, which has pissed off a lot of people. The Boomerang Singer 19 focused the video on Hollywood bigwigs and labeled Candace Cameron Burr the rudest celebrity she ever met. And this is sad that this almighty Jojo Siwa, who's so perfect, is resorting to grading celebrities. You know who grades celebrities? People like Chet Hanks that have no talent. Oh, wait, maybe Jojo Siwa doesn't have talent and her music's awful. And the only reason her music is good is because if you play anything to a 10-year-old, it sounds good. You played 50 Cent, The Massacre, to a 10-year-old back in 2005, someone that was born in the early 90s, and they're going to think it's good. You listen back to the rap music, it ain't that good. The same thing with JoJo Siwa. Just saying. <laughs> JoJo Siwa. She's going to be a bundle of fun when she gets old. She's just going to look washed up as hell, like a prune that's been in the sun all day. Jojo Siwa just really creeps me out. She seems like she had a rough childhood. You know, she just gives me vibes like you wouldn't want to hang out with her. That you're not like, oh my God, Jojo Siwa is so much fun to be around. She probably expects everybody to know who she is. She probably expects everybody to bow down to her and be like, oh my God, are you Jojo Siwa? Ugh. And it's that like Ellen DeGeneres thing of always oh, smiling. <laughs> I'm always happy, <laughs> even though I'm grading other people. So obviously I'm not that happy, but <laughs> I smile. So that means I'm happy. I mean, Robin Williams is smiling. Just saying. Will Prince Harry lose to Michelle Obama in a battle of books? The Duke's tell-all memoir is facing a potentially embarrassing launch date clash with the former first lady's follow-up title. So Prince Harry has his book going up the same day as Michelle Obama. Yeah, I, I would push that back a week. I would maybe not think about it. I'd go, yeah, let's release it in a month. But Harry's ego is going to be like, oh, the Americans are not going to buy Michelle Obama's book. They're going to buy my book because I'm so smug. Yeah, we're going to buy Michelle's book. I'm not going to buy it. What, it's going to explain how you made lunch for a millennial's awful. I'm trying to help you eat healthier. So all the lunch that you're going to have after Obama got elected in office in 2009. Yeah, that was my fault. All those lunches that millennials had that were average was because Michelle Obama changed it. But I ain't complaining. 
Luckily, we had a Jimmy John's across the block from my high school, so we just get Jimmy John's every day. But that's living in the past. Yeah, Prince Harry, he has to be out of his mind to think that he's going to win the battle up against Michelle Obama for books. Who even reads anymore, though? I feel like really smart people read. With my attention span, I could barely pay attention to a TikTok. No, 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 no. I'm not kidding. I can barely pay attention to the show. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yes. Following segment was brought to you by Amir Academy of Martial Arts. Let me tell you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls at a gallery or however they said it. You can go to like an average boxing trainer or an MMA trainer that's going to kind of care about you, kind of not, blah, blah, blah. He's going to be ripped and, you know, wearing a UFC shirt and has a UFC gym. You can go there and you're going to get results. But do you want to have your life change forever? Do you want to go to a trainer that's going to care about you, that's going to root for you, that's going to help you in? Do you want self-defense classes? Oh, you can have that and much, much more at Amir Academy of Martial Arts, 2800, 22nd Street North, and that's in St. Petersburg. You go to amiracademy.com, it has all the info. And when you go to his class, Monday through Saturday, he's got a wide variation of classes, a wide variety. But when you find the right class for you, and you go there, and you tell him I sent you, He's going to hook you up. Happy hour. Happy hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. What are you looking at? Loser! You're a loser! Are you feeling sorry for yourself? Welcome back to Hoppy Hour on Z Radio Live. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Other stations are tuned in too. Oh, yeah. 856 49 Hoppy. 856 494 6773. You tweeted me at Riot Hoppy Radio, and you can always email me Riot Hoppy Radio at gmail.com. I don't know if anybody else in their late 20s can relate to this. But in my early 20s, when you were hung over after a night of drinking, it was just like a bad headache, you know? But man, in my late 20s now, eight years of damage to this liver. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. I should be careful. Uh, what I'm saying is now I get tummy aches. I wake up in the morning and it's not a good time. I'm sitting on the toilet for 20 minutes. And it's weird because when you're out at the bar, you know it's going to happen. Like you're drinking beer after beer after beer. And then walking a while out to get some snacks. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was my crazy turned up Friday night. A good time hanging out with me at the local dive bar. But I just noticed that these hangovers, man. Oh, my God. You got to buy like a whole thing of Pedialyte. And you got to have like Tums ready. And then you're just all day. You're like, oh, oh, like you don't feel well. And then like by 4 p.m. You're like, ah, oh, much better. There's been this other thing that's been really annoying me lately. There's this other thing that I think the other listeners of Happy Hour, all of you can relate to. Something that you're going to go, Ryan, wow, you brought this up. I've always felt this way. And that topic is. When you are watching Hulu or Netflix or Paramount Plus or Disney Plus or Pluto TV at night. I don't know if you're like me, but I leave my TV on at night. My girlfriend just wants to have the TV on. So usually we're watching Adult Swim like Rick and Morty or Aqua Teen Hunger Force. And that's on HBO Max. So if you leave the TV on all night, it's like having a little background chaos of Adult Swim. It's quite delightful. But if she wants to put on Futurama or George Lopez, she goes to Hulu. And in the middle of the night, it says, are you watching? And it pauses it and then makes the screen really big. Hulu, why do you care? Netflix, why do you care? Paramount Plus, Pluto TV, why do you care if I'm watching or not? And they tweet about it and they think it's funny. It's like saying the ice cream machine is broken. It's just like, why? 
give me the option to turn it off. I want to have all of Married with Children at night. I don't want to have, are you watching? Who cares if I'm watching? I'm paying 15 bucks for your service. Do something nice to me. I'm just, I'm just saying. It's utterly ridiculous. It's getting out of hand. Funny part is we have a, we have two cats that hate each other. I got my cat Luna that's five years old. How crazy, how time flies. And then we got Hoagie that's going on like a year and a half. And he's like a crazy orange cat that like was like at this redneck's house and then went to a dorm and then was like homeless and knocked up a few ler- herds, litters, um, like when he was like six months old. So he's wild and he'll attack you because he's Hoagie and he's nuts. So we have to keep him and Luna separated because they really can't be in the same room. They're not really vibing with each other. They're not really friends. And uh, we'll put on some background noise for Hoagie because we bow down to Hoagie in this house because we kiss his ass because he will attack you. Uh, And I will put on Johnny Carson on Pluto TV. And it's quite delightful to see that talentless, oh wait, I mean talented, but just a dirtbag known as Johnny Carson. Like he was a little bit before my time, but... Throughout the years, I've watched reruns of Johnny Carson, and let me tell you, he just puts the ugh and smug. Like, he's really good at what he does, and he's like the original Joe Rogan, essentially, but oh my God, you can just tell how much of a douchebag he is. You can tell which celebrities he's probably hooking up with, who he doesn't want to interview, and when you read that on Johnny Carson, it's just, it's quite the thing to read. 856-49-HOPPY. Shaquille O'Neal's son, Sharif O'Neal, signed six-figure contract with the G League. Yeah, I don't really think Shaquille O'Neal is happy that his kids playing basketball. I don't really think he takes pride in it. Now you're going, Ryan, how could you come to that assumption? That's so rude to say that Shaquille O'Neal doesn't want to see his kid play basketball. That was so shocking of you, you edgelord, you want to be Reddit user. No, let me tell you. If you look at the body language of when his son would mess up in a game, Sharif, and you'd look at Shaq, there were some videos that were on Twitter because I wasn't watching the NBA G League. Give me a break. Even the NBA fan of me is like, I'm good. (laughs) Call me in October when the season begins. When you guys tip off. Thompson's been tipping off all year. Here's the thing. When you literally have Sharif in the NBA G League not doing that good, just doing okay, it makes Shaq look bad. It was the same thing. Like, Michael Jordan's kid tried to play basketball and sucked. Bronny James, LeBron's kid, is probably going to be the first one to ever, you know, like actually break the mold and be good. But that's because LeBron is just a work of art. After playing for the Lakers in Summer League, Sharif O'Neal, the the son of Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal, is signing a six-figure contract with the NBA G League, Ignite. Vegas, let's do it. Thank you, Ignite. Ignite is what Sharif tweeted. Uh, I love how in the article it says, signs a six-figure deal, Sharif O'Neal. Son of Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal. Like They can't even just let him have his moment. They can't just go, Sharif, you made something. You're having a hard time. You're talented, but a little, like, unpolished. Where have I been told that before? <laughs> but then he finally makes a leak. And he goes, oh, my God, yes, this is my moment. And then they're like, this is the son of Shaquille O'Neal, one of the best players of all time. <laughs> Eight, five, six, 49, Hoppy. So that's gone on in the NBA. My um. Bialik and Ken Jennings to be announced as permanent Jeopardy host. Oh my God, who the hell cares? When Alex Trebek died, it wasn't even like a debate if the show was over with. If you are watching Jeopardy every night, you're not someone I want to hang out with. You probably wouldn't get along with me. You probably think you're smarter than me. Ooh, I watch Jeopardy every night. I'm so intelligent. Get out of here. Here's what I'm saying. Once Alec Baldwin died, it was, or once Alex Trebek died, it was over with. It was done. They're keeping it on because enough people are watching it. But Ken Jennings is kind of gives me weird vibes. Like, check his hard drive, bro. <laughs> and my MB, oh, it gives me such, I'm a rocket scientist vibes. I'm smarter than you. Like, you know when you're hanging out with somebody who's really smart? I'm not saying like smart, smart. Like someone that's really smart. 
they went to colleges maybe they're like a lawyer and they went to well you don't have to be smart to be a lawyer but they went to like 12 years of college and they're super successful and like you know that they're smarter than you but you're not self-conscious about it because you admit that you didn't really try in school and they worked hard so there's no denying that they're smarter than you but then when they talk to you you're like i get it okay and that's not me projecting that's not me being insecure that's just working in radio for eight years you have 10 years you have people that like project being smart and then the decisions that are made in their social life you're like are you really that smart you can project anything you want what happens in the personal life is the real part of your legacy not the part of oh what was the person like my umbiolic or radio people what were they like on tv no you all will be remembered for how you were behind the scenes and even if not, everybody knows how Ellen DeGeneres treated her team or how Howard treated his team or Johnny Carson or local shock jock morning shows. Even if the truth never gets out that the 90s and 2000s were full of people being mistreated. You got to look yourself in the mirror, buddy. Oh, I get to look at my beautiful blue eyes every day when I go to the mirror. I'm like, I am so gorgeous. I don't have pimples from anxiety all the time. <laughs> That's oh, the worst. I'm like, hey, babe, can you pop my pimples? She's like, I would love to take my aggression out on you because you're annoying me. <laughs> 856 49 happy. I'm just saying when I look in the mirror, I see a gorgeous guy with a lot of flaws. And that's the first move to admitting narcissism. <sighs> you should give it a try. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yes. Yeah, following segment was brought to you by Rich Keeley, Master Barbershop. When I tell you that Rich Keeley is the best barber in all of the Bay Area, I'm a man of my words. I would not lie to you. I want you to get a good haircut when you're with Rich Keeley. RichKBarber.com. He is over at Salon Loft on Kennedy Boulevard, right next door to McDonald's. But you can't just show up and be like, hey, Rich, can I get a haircut? No, 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 no. You got to sign up ahead of time. This is a legit operation. I, I wouldn't just promote an average barber on my show. I wouldn't just have some average Joe, hey, that cuts hair. No, 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 no. I go with the elite. And when I tell you Rich Keeley, he's not just the best barber in the Bay Area. Forget that. In the whole universe, I'm a man of my words, but you might have to wait a few days. But trust me, you can join the waiting list and you'll get there sooner than later. Oh, go to some place, one of those chain haircut places. Oh, they got girls with boobs. Ah, there's no websites that have that, boys. Do you want a professional haircut? Just go to richkbarber.com. Tell them I sent you. Happy hour. Happy hour. Listen to me, Randy. It doesn't matter what you look like on the outside, whether you're white or black or Sasquatch even. As long as you follow your dream, no matter how crazy or against the law it is. Except for Sasquatch. If you're Sasquatch, the rules are different. Forget it, Meatwad. I'm a circus freak. That's all I'll ever be. Whatever. Call Hoppy now. 856-49-HOPPY Tweet at him at Ryan Hoppy Radio Or chat him live via the Hoppy Radio app Welcome back to Hoppy Hour on Z Radio Live Ladies and gentlemen, here it is The most listened to radio show on the planet Even the other stations are tuned in too Big news out of the wrestling world, WWE Chairman and CEO Vince McMahon is retiring. He released a statement citing his age as a reason. Oh, uh, no, 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 it wasn't. Wall Street Journal reported that he... All right, enough. Uh, it wasn't the fact that you had like 90 million sexual groping claims or whatever the hell. We don't really know what he did. That's what's creaky, but he paid a lot of money. Like, he paid Bill O'Reilly money to get that to go away. I'm just saying, there's something there, man. If you're that innocent, like... I don't know. I'm not saying there's different rankings to it, but like if they were light and they're like, oh, he was just grabbing my butt. Like, I'm not saying that's good, 
you might be able to get away with it less. It's all bad. What I'm saying is it really makes you wonder when the price tag is that high to get him and the girls to now talk about it in court really makes you wonder what he did. Really makes you go, that might not be a a good guy. Vince McMahon, someone that's exploited women throughout his life. uh, I don't think he's a good guy. Welcome. And here is his daughter. (laughs) She was on SmackDown announcing his retirement. (laughs) So he literally, I just laughed weird. That was bizarre. It's like multiple personalities. Uh, He literally retires because of these sexual assault claims and all these different things that he's being accused of that we don't even know about. So this is involving women, obviously. So they go, hey, you have a daughter. (laughs) Imagine being her. Oh, it's got to be a little awkward. And they go, hey, he's in trouble with females. Can you go out and announce his retirement so that people forget what happens? And she goes, whatever, Dad, you're paying the bills. Welcome to Friday Night Smackdown. All those dumb fans. Smackdown. You ever wonder what Reddit.com sounds like? The, like the mean comments. Not the comments that are critical, but like a mean comment. This is what the fan base of Reddit sounds like. People that are really mean on Reddit, this is their overall IQ. Their overall sound if you were to hang out with a Reddit user. <laughs> Tonight, my father, yeah. Vince McMahon. I think I heard of him. Retired. No. <laughs> like she's acting like it's like such a big deal. Like I don't watch that much wrestling, but it feels like he's been retired for like twenty years, dude. And that's me watching wrestling, and I'm noticing things, and I've worked and knowing people, and I'm friends with people kind of that are a part of the WWE and it was always the unspoken thing that you always heard about Vince and this is not me saying any family secrets I'm not saying who I heard this from but there's so many wrestlers in the Bay Area that you'll never guess and they were just saying that it's like the mafia the same thing has been said about like the way Roger Goodell runs it when you have one dude who's sitting in his big office with his boring big personality and his big desk That's when you have companies that are run like the mafia. From WWE. (laughs) I can smell the crowd from here. This is the the company that he created. Oh, yeah, I remember. That he founded. And he ruined. And he wanted to make sure. Mm. And his retirement. That he. You mean force fullness that I don't know that was a dumb joke sorry thanks all of you he thanked the WWE universe oh that sounds like a fun universe people that are WWE fans hanging out in the universe <laughs> I think the Big Bang Theory is the funniest show ever <laughs> you got- I first thought they were saying F you Prince but they were saying thank you Vince Thank you, Vince, for exploiting women for 40 years so we could jerk off in our basement. WWE Universe. Thank you for all the content, Vince. (laughs) Without you, there wouldn't be a China sex tape. You guys are, you're jumping me. I'm I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to get there. I've legitimately seen better acting in a porno than the WWE. I'm guys, I'm trying to get there. I don't know what I'm really saying because my dad's a creep, but he... Hey, it's all the bills. <laughs> and that's all of you out here. That's everybody in the back. Oh, Ryan, it's so rude of you to say that without her father, she wouldn't have this gig. Yeah, she's talented, but she sounds like any other ring girl ever. Because it's the daughter. You're going to have to be that- real about some things. In this woke society, not everything is nice. She has the job because Vince is her father. She's talented. They're not going to put a gremlin out there. They're going to put a beautiful person. And she's a beautiful person. And she's talented. And she's good. But there's nothing special about her. She's like any other female wrestler ever. But because she has the name McMahon, she has all the power. That's everybody in the back. That is all of our crew. Yeah. That's everyone who hangs the rigging. It's everyone who designs all of the graphics. It's, it's all the people that swept my dad's 
debauchery under the rug. Let's thank those people in the HR department that doesn't really exist. HR department's not being really helpful. What a concept. The HR department is to completely and utterly save the company. If you ever think that the HR department is there for you to help you, no, they're there to make sure that whatever's happening in the HR department doesn't leave the HR department. You know what I mean? They're looking out for themselves. Oh, they might help you out or whatever. The HR department's not your friend. It's even Pat McAfee and I guess Michael Cole. God, Pat McAfee is so cool. I got a man crush on that guy. This is the WWE universe, and we are eternally grateful for all of you. And a lot of the fans are on FamilyWatchdog.us. Just saying. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah, this following segment is brought to you by WestChasePrinting.com, the best printing company around. Happy hour. Happy Hour. He's the voice of a generation that got screwed by the baby boomers. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, no. I got news that is going to ruin your night. The news I'm about to tell you, oh, you're going to be crushed. Full Frontal with Samantha B was axed on TBS after seven seasons and 200 episodes. Good for her. One of the worst shows of all time. Well, God, it was awful. So she began as a correspondent on The Daily Show, and John was over there when it was actually good. Trevor Noah. <laughs> when are we going to pretend, or when are we going to quit pretending that Trevor Noah is any good? When are we going to quit going, oh, Trevor Noah is going to get funny at some point. He's been here seven, eight years. He sucks. Oh, but he's from another country, and he brings a different perspective. No, he's an, any other liberal douche. They're no different. Get out of here. But give it up to Samantha B, man. That show is garbage. And the liberals are just like, I'll watch it. I'll watch it. It has jokes about Trump. Once Trump got out of office, she had nothing. She was dead in the water. (laughs) All those idiots. All their ratings are going down. Why? Because you had such an easy content machine and Donald Trump. It was literally like playing softball every night. It was like playing t-ball and you could just swing a home run. Trump's like, kafifi. And you're like, (laughs) (laughs) and then Joe Biden says all these things, Ryan, and the uh, same late night hosts are like, yeah, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to protect our boy Joe and even have Jimmy Kimmel interview Hunter Biden. But they did crack together and cheat at their wives afterwards. You don't know about these people. If you are Jimmy Kimmel and you are giving a legitimate interview to Hunter Biden, I think it's time for us to revisit everything that should have canceled Jimmy Kimmel, but just never happened. It's unfair. Like all the other people got canceled. Aziz, I'm sorry I got canceled. But for some reason, Jimmy Kimmel has never been canceled. He must have the best PR team ever. Or he must be whipped by his wife who tells him what to do and how to go under the radar. Whoa! Happy hot topic. Oh, what the hell is going on with everyone's favorite deadbeat dad, Tristan Thompson? <laughs> a lot of room to grow. Regardless of us being friends or wherever we stand. Yeah. Yeah, it's a season of healing for Tristan Thompson and Khloe Kardashian. Oh, that's good. I'm glad they're finally healing after 12 incidents of infidelity that we know of. The NBA pro shared a cryptic message about responsibility. Says nothing is promised to you. Number two, no one owes you anything. Number three, you have responsibility in your life. That makes sense. These three rules. Know these three rules as early as possible and realize that independence is the way forward. Yeah, but you're clinging on to Chloe for attention, brah. If you really want to be independent, Tristan Thompson, oh, we're going to bow down to you and how you're lying to us right now. If we're really going to become fans of you, brah, 
We got to admit that you got to quit leeching off of Chloe then. If you're really this independent guy, go out there and have a good NBA game for once. As the couple awaits the arrival of baby number two via surrogate. Uh On Sunday, Tristan posted some wisdom on Instagram. Oh, such wisdom from Tristan Thompson. I mean, does anybody really have wisdom? I mean, he's really no different than Gary Vee. Let's be honest here. You could show that quote to me. I'd be like, oh, it's Gary Vee. The part grabbing fans' attention, rule number three, you have all responsibility in your life. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's an interesting piece of advice coming from- Got it. From the athlete on the heels of his paternity scandal when he cheated on Chloe and had a son- One of the nine times with that side chick. Can you imagine being a side chick mother? Son with- You know, like all the side chicks that get pregnant while they're with their main woman. You know, they think that they're like literally- Oh, I'm going to be the one that he spends the rest of his life with. Do you ever notice that the like NBA players that have side chicks that get married to them, like we're waiting on Paul George, like you notice those relationships where they marry the side chick, it always ends awfully. It's because you were a part of a marriage that failed. You're a bad person. You're a cheater. I love when they're surprised. They're like, oh my God, this relationship with somebody that I cheated on my wife with, it didn't work out. I've seen this in radio. Oh my God, I cheated on my wife. Oh, so I'm going to hang out with this girl that I cheated on my wife with and we're going to get married. (laughs) Where the hell is the concept? You guys literally began as a sham, Tristan. Coming from the athlete on the heels of his paternity scandal when he cheated on Chloe and had a son with fitness model Marilee Nichols. Daddy issues. It's his whole thing saying, I'm Tristan Thompson, met this girl in Houston, I slept with her on my 30th birthday. Yeah. So I said it to him and I said, Does Chloe know about this? Chloe. Does Chloe know that you banged out a girl last night? And based on the timeline, Tristan stepped out on Coco as they were seemingly working things out and planning to expand their own family. Man, he, dude, like, you look at these NBA players and you're like, oh my God, they can get any girl they want. Dude, you got to keep up with the drama. Blah, blah, blah. You got seven of them babbling at you. Six baby mamas in this country, whatever. Like, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of cackling. As fans saw on season one of the Kardashians. You know, I want to you know, get us back together and build our family. And They're like, hey, can you go out there and pretend to be a good person for a second? He's like, how do I do that? And they're like, yeah, just take these cue cards. Hopefully be able to expand our family one day. God. Expand our family while I'm expanding other girls' cervixes. I want- Every day he tries to show me and prove to me that he is a different person and yeah. that I should have faith and trust him. Meanwhile, Chloe's been sharing a few equally cryptic messages of her own. Yeah. She posted an Instagram story about being thankful for the difficult time. Be thankful that you don't already have everything you desire. If you did, what would there be to look forward to? I don't know, never having to work another day in my life. It goes on. Be thankful when you don't know something for it gives you the opportunity to learn. If she was really learning, she would leave Thompson, oh, that's right. She has no talent and nothing really going for her. So she needs to rely on him for attention. Oh, but she's different this time. Times because those times help you grow. Coco continued, be thankful for your mistakes. They will. Yeah, you made a lot of them. Me too. Teach you valuable lessons. Mm -hmm. And she says gratitude can turn a negative into a positive. I'm focused on work and like taking care of me, my body and soul. And ah, you're doing such a good job with that. Having to always Photoshop your body. What do you really look like? True. Yeah. Coco's main focus is being the best mom to their four year old daughter. True. Hell yeah. That's what you want to hear. Forget about all the baby mama drama. They have a kid involved too. (laughs) Delightful. Happy hour. Happy hour. Oh, yeah. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yes. Following segment was brought to you. I don't even know. Who would it be at this point? <sighs> Let me think. It would be brought to you. Oh, I got to have more excitement when I talk about Devin Prasad. I, just, I can't just go into a segment and half-ass my live read with Devin Prasad. All right. Take two. I got to give Devin Prasad the attention he deserves. I can't just... You, you get the point. Happy hour will be right back. All right, take two. Let me tell you, Devin Prasad is the best trainer in all the Bay Area. He's also an official sponsor of Happy Hour. Go to fitsagefitness.net. There has the link to his app. He's got different rankings of memberships. And if you don't live in Tampa Bay, it's not like you're screwed. 
in these live reads, I used to say, you're missing out. Now I'm saying, get out of Florida. Don't come here. But if you don't live in Tampa Bay, you can do virtual workouts by going to fitsagefitness.net. And you got to make it happen, Captain. Time's counting. Or whatever it is. Happy hour. Happy hour. It's time to turn Hoppy on. Whoa, hey. Oh, hey, hey. It's, uh, I mean, it's like a koala bear crapped a rainbow in my brain. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour on Z Radio Live. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The most listened to radio show on the planet. Yeah. And the other stations are tuned in too. Uh, 856 49 Hoppy. Ah, oh, what the hell is going on with Kate Moss? You also testified on behalf of your former partner, Johnny Depp, in his recent libel trial. Mm. Those gestures could have backfired on you. Yeah. Um, what made you come out on their behalf? I wanted attention. No one was really thinking about Kate Moss. When had somebody brought up her name in the last 13 years? She sees the opportunity. She sees the opportunity. Oh, I'll help out Johnny Depp and everything be. Then everything began to manifest. She didn't really care about Johnny Depp. She wanted attention. I believe in the truth and I believe in fairness. And Oh, that's good. I'm glad you believe in fairness. That's a good thing. You're being fair. Justice. Kate Moss opens up about her involvement in the defamation trial between Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Oh, yeah, that thing. Glad it's over with. It's like an STD that finally went away after you put on cream for a few weeks. Miss Moss, do you know Johnny Depp? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. How do you know Mr. Depp? Ah, oh, we used to beg. I had a relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Back in May, the British supermodel who dated the actor between 1994 yeah. and 1998. Oh, but that was like 25 years ago. It wasn't that recent. Oh, I'm sure your memory is completely like intact like it was in 1997. I mean, no one really remembers the 90s. It's weird. Testified in support of her ex during the trial. Yeah. And now, as a guest on the BBC radio show Desert Island Discs. Oh, I'm a huge fan of that show. She explains why she spoke out. Why? I believe in the truth. And, and that I need to get my career going again. What the hell has Kate Moss done in 20 years? And I believe in fairness yeah. and justice. We got it. Ah, uh, you got it. You got the attention you wanted. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! As a heat wave engulfs the country, firefighters uh, in Mariposa County are racing to get the upper hand on this wildfire. It's a- Oh, yeah. Let's move to California. Pay seven bucks for one pump of gas. Literally, one gallon is seven bucks there. Move to California and then deal with wildfires. Oh, sounds like a great idea. Remember when California was cool? <laughs> It's a county's third fire in only two weeks. Yeah. Flames from what's called the... Only the third fire. That's how numb we are to school shootings and explosions within the environment. We go, oh, it's just the third one in two weeks. Like, that's a big deal. Oak fire burning... Only three fires. Only acres of houses that are forever ruined. You, Over six- you see what I'm saying? 6,500 acres leaving some buildings destroyed and coming... Ah, uh, that's not good. ...dangerously close to others. Uh-huh. Fire's been coming towards us faster and faster. This fire... Uh, it's got to be scary. You're just kind of like going, hey, Mother Nature, can you make it rain or something? Hey, God up there. I thought God was real. Can you make this go away? I don't really want to lose my house because I don't have any insurance because I'm a poor person in this economy. Oh, but God's real. Fire sparked Friday afternoon near the southwest section of Yosemite National Park. Ah, uh, and- that sucks. Reaching the Sierra National Forest. And I hate when they're like dropping water or whatever they're dropping from the helicopter because you know it really doesn't do that much. You're just like, it's like being next to an explosion and you have a bucket of water and you're like, I'm contributing. Dozens of people to live in the area evacuated. I'm- okay, that's good. 856 49 Dirtbag. Floyd Mayweather spent $18,000 on a mink fur lined car seat for. Uh, why is he going broke? Everyone goes, why is Floyd Mayweather losing his money at a very rapid pace? When you're purchasing $18,000, like, things for your babies, yeah, you don't really know how to deal with your money. 
for his grandson. Not so the smartest he, guy. he had this uh, this $350,000 Rolls Royce. Mm. It already had a fur interior. So he wanted the car seat for his grandson, Kentrell. Got Everyone it. was saying online though, like one milkshake for the kid and, and this seat is done. Yeah, kids are messy. Also, hell yeah. Dude, there are so many kids in my apartment. And like, I thought I wanted to be a dad. I'm not putting it out there that I don't want to be a dad. Oh my God, dude. Like the patience you have to have. Like, I don't know if it was a deadbeat father, but I was in the pool on like Sunday night, like 4 p.m. And he's like, daddy. It was like a son and his father. Kids probably four or five, probably four. And he's like, daddy, can I go to Target? And see my friend, she's going to Target. And he's like, no, 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 we can't go to Target, son. He's like, hey, daddy, could I go to a sleepover tonight? And the father's like, no, 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 I don't want you to go to a sleepover tonight. And he's like, hey, dad, could I, like, go sleep over at mom's? And then he was like, why don't you want to sleep over at my place? And he was, like, in his early 20s. I was like, that was very uncomfortable. And like, you're not even trying to pay attention, but it's right in front of you. And if you leave the situation, then it looks like you were creeped out by it. It's just a lot of anxiety being around humans in this lifetime. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! What the hell is going on with everyone's favorite dad be dad? Nick Cannon has expanded his family once again. Oh, hell yeah. He's going to be more of a deadbeat dad. Oh, he's got. Did he create a way to add more time to the day? You know what I mean? You see what I'm saying? Literally, he's not going to have enough time for them. When he had like five kids and he was on Howard's show, it was like, okay, I can kind of see how you do it, how you squeeze in a little bit of time here and here and here and here. Oh, hey, son, we can hang from 4.01 to 5 p.m. The actor and comedian has welcomed his eighth child, a baby boy with model Brie Tiaz. And she is the ex of Johnny Menzel. And Johnny, I know you had a little bit of a slump there. Before I went on Cleveland Radio, I tweeted that if Johnny Menzel can handle the Cleveland media, how is he going to handle the national spotlight? And Rover's like, yeah, well, yes, I can't have this guy talking about this, yes, yes. And then I ended up being correct. It's like, okay, here's what I'm saying. Johnny Manziel couldn't handle the Cleveland media. So then Johnny Manziel flames out. And this woman's like, I don't want to be around your drunken ass. Like, there was always pictures of like Johnny Manziel drunk at a bar with these girls that are like a Cleveland 10. And that would be like a Florida 5. Nick confirmed Bree's pregnancy in January, shortly after the death of his five-month-old son, Zen. Whom he ah, whatever, Zen. I don't even know if he thinks about Zen. I'm not saying you don't think about it, but that's a lot to think about, bro. He shared with Alyssa Scott. Okay, 856-49. What the hell's going on with Adele? Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Adele is finally heading to Sin City oh, wow. after postponing her 2022 Las Vegas residency back in no. January. The singer has unveiled the rescheduled dates for weekends with Adele. Mm. She says on Instagram, July 25th, uh -huh. words can't explain how ecstatic I am to finally be able to announce these rescheduled shows. Got it. I truly was heartbroken to have to cancel them. Yeah. She adds, but after what feels like an eternity of figuring out logistics for the show that I really want to deliver and knowing it can happen oh, thank god i'm glad you got everything together adele is affecting our lives i'm more excited than ever adele fans have been waiting months to learn when the caesar's palace residency would take place after if you were waiting around going hey adele, when are you going to perform you need to go to a better concert life's too short the singer abruptly postponed the dates due to a covid19 outbreak within her team and other logistical ah uh, so adele you know, I was having issues, and I'm glad she figured it all out. Because when I think of the authority on everything, I think of Adele. Next up, three comedy giants. Kevin Hart, Chris mm -hmm. Rock, and Dave Chappelle. Oh they're just big names. I'm not saying they're not funny, but god damn, they're everywhere. I think that's what happens when you're famous. You are everywhere. Over the weekend, fans with a ticket to Hart and Rock's stand-up show. Speaking of how do we not know, mm. at Madison Square Garden, were treated to a surprise opening set by Dave Chappelle. Oh, the oh yeah. I don't get the whole being upset by Dave Chappelle. Listen, listen. Life's so short, man. Like, his jokes are pretty repulsive, but he's a comedian. I don't know why everyone's mad. He's not running for office. We already had that routine. Comedian's guest appearance comes not long after a Minneapolis venue abruptly canceled one of Chappelle's shows earlier this month. Oh, yeah. He doesn't really care. They had to pay him anyway. 
Saturday's MSG show was a no phones event. But I am. Heart shared. A- they are smart for doing that, by the way. Few photos on social media. Mm-hmm. The three stars were joined on stage by an actual goat. They- <laughs> Kevin's in the middle and he looks high as hell and like having like that like little midlife crisis smile where he's like, "This is a big moment. I'm hanging up with Chris Rock." And Dave Chappelle, why am I saying that? He's a comedian from Orlando who began as an open mic comedian that was really confident and a great promoter, and then he went to Philly and got famous. So Kevin Hart really had to work for it. I'm not saying Dave Chappelle and Chris Rock didn't work for it, but Kevin Hart really worked for it. That's one thing that not a lot of people know is that Kevin Hart really worked hard. Brought one out, (laughs) obviously making a not-so-subtle greatest of all time reference. Uh, That's good. I don't particularly find Kevin Hart funny, but he's likable. He cheated on his wife, but who hasn't that's famous? Here's what I'm saying. Like, just let him do his thing, man. You really, like, want when, when, when you're dying to have your memories be, oh, I was so offended of uh, this TV show. Like, it's not going to matter, man. Live your life. No! Happy Hot Topic! <laughs> Hey guys, it's Allie for Hollywood Life with your Card Jenner Roundup, and let's jump into it today with Courtney Kardashian as yeah. she calls Travis Barker the most thoughtful person after he set her flat. Uh, forget about the person that lives next door. I love when people say that. That's the best father ever. That's the most caring person ever. Ah, screw any other person that's ever been caring. Oh, because of you, you're the one. You're the best father of all time. Ugh, just say your dad's great and be humble flowers. Court took to Instagram stories to share a pic of a bouquet of gorgeous white and purple tulips and mm-hmm. tagged her new hubby. Got it. She wrote in the caption most thoughtful person I know. Uh-huh. Recall these flowers come just days after Courtney shared a series of photos from their getaway in Palm Springs. Man, he looks like a zombie like just like a vampire whenever the hell he's walking around with those shades on. Like it looks cool when you're walking out of a nightclub with shades on when you're high as hell and cocaine at two in the morning when you're in Blink 182. But like, there's sometimes that, like when Travis Barker wears his shades, you're like, you're in the middle of the Met Gala. You look like a douche, bro. Palm Springs, California. Uh-huh. So I guess these two are still in romance mode Got it. despite being married. Whatever. Gentlemen, please take note. Sending random flowers to your partner is a great idea. Uh-huh. A great idea. Nicely done, Travis. Yeah. Switching over to Kylie Jenner and Travis Scott because these two also have their own romance going on. Oh, yeah. He's like, make me look good. Like, everyone has forgot about his festival from November. Like, they swept that under the Kardashian rug as skeletons. Beauty mogul took to Instagram yesterday to leave a perhaps flirty or secret pregnancy comment on one of Travis's pictures. Mm-hmm. The pic featured the sicko mode rapper sitting on a water pipe on a New York City street. Yeah, sounds about right. Well, Kylie must have liked what she saw because she commented with a smiley face and a tongue. Oh, that that's that's showing a lot of emotion. Commenting one emoji. Oh yeah, you can read a lot into that situation. An emoji and several pregnant brunettes rubbing their bellies. Mm-hmm. Now, is she trying to say she's thirsty for Trav? And ah, whatever. She wants him to make her pregnant. Moving or she's on. Already pregnant with baby number whatever. three. I don't want to start any rumors. Well, but what do you guys think? Oh, Continuing up. with Kylie Jenner as her Kylie swim line might be over. That sucks. I don't know who the hell could afford that. It's probably why it's over with. They're like, you're telling me there's poor people out there? Speaking of the rich and famous, here's Laura Laughlin. Oh, we forgot about how much of a scumbag she is. They have welcomed me with such open arms at a time. It is uh, Lori Laughlin's first appearance on TV since the scandal, and she's working with the Project Angel Food Organization. So she's like helping out the poor. And this is the first time Lori Laughlin is back on TV. Like, I'm a good person now doing my community service. Let's film it. I can't just be a good person. I got to be like Meghan Markle. Everyone must see how wonderful I am. They have welcomed me with such open arms at a time when I was feeling particularly down. Yeah, it was kind of a big deal going to jail. And broken. Lori Loughlin opens up in her first TV appearance since the college admission scandal. Oh, yeah. I'm sure this wasn't pre-written. You're going to say this exactly. They want her saying nothing off the cuff. Over a year and a half after mm. completing her prison sentence, the actress breaks her silence. Yeah. All good? You want me to leave it right there? Lori appears in Project Angel Foods, lead with love to Peloton, sharing details about her volunteer work. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody must know what I'm up to. 
I wonder what's going on behind her closed doors. I've been working with Project Angel Food for a year and a half now. And it's everybody look at all the community service I'm doing, but when they're around, I probably don't look you in the eye. Oh, whatever. Eureka Salmon. Happy hour. Happy hour. Happy hour will be right back. Oh, yeah. This following segment was brought to you by quadpod.com. QOD, POD.com slash Ryan Hoppy. When I tell you. That they are the best podcast network out there. I'm a man of my words. Happy hour. Happy hour. Doctors say the life expectancy of the average man is now 76.2 years. <gasps> 76.2, but I'm already 38.1. I've wasted half my life. <laughs> Half my life gone, and I'm only guaranteed 38 more years. Welcome back to Hoppy Hour on Z Radio Live. Ladies and gentlemen, here it is. The what up? Listen to a radio show on the planet. Even the other stations are tuned in too. Oh, they are. They're all as the name. Whoa! Happy Hot Topic! Hey guys, it's Allie for Hollywood Life with your news and entertainment. And let's start off today with Jason Momoa as the Aquaman star. Why? I was unfortunately involved in a terrifying car accident yesterday. I wonder whose fault it was. It would never be his fault. Yesterday. According to a police report obtained by Hollywood Life, a motorcycle jumped lanes and smashed into Jason head on. Luckily, oh, that sounds scary. Luckily, everyone was okay. Inc- he probably had that moment where like, you know, when people like flatline and they're like, oh my God, I didn't see a heaven. I wonder if Jason Momoa went through that where he's like, oh my God, I, I, I'm like alive right now. And I was just dead and there was nothing. Including Momoa's 1970 Oldsmobile. Yeah. The police report said that after the collision, Jason exited his vehicle to assist the other person involved and was able. He's a real life superhero. To flag down a passing motorist to call 911. Ah. While the motorcyclist was transported by ambulance to the hospital, Momoa, being the giant that he is, was of course uninjured and remained on the scene throughout the investigation. We're so glad to see that everyone's okay. Real life hero. Switching gears to Elon Musk because he has denied having an affair with Google founder Sergey Brin's wife, Nicole. Yeah, he was acting all tough, like, yeah, look at me banging all these women. And now the dirty laundry is about to come out, bro. <laughs> Shanahan. A story published by the Wall Street Journal alleged that Musk had an affair with Nicole weeks before Sergey filed for a divorce from her. Yeah, can you imagine Elon Musk banging your wife? You're like, ah, oh, you, can, you, you can have her, man. Also, Elon welcomed a second baby with his ex-girlfriend Grimes around that same time. Oh, yeah. Well, not only did Elon deny the allegations on Twitter by saying this is total BS, Sergey and I are friends, and we're at a party together last mm. night. I've only seen Nicole twice in three years. Both And both times I saw her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's saying I only saw her twice. Yeah, both times you saw her, you banged her. Both times with many other people around, nothing romantic. Yeah, nothing romantic. He's being cryptic. It was just sex, bruh. He also doubled down on the claims, tweeting, haven't even had sex in ages, sigh. Um, uh, I'm sure you'd be such a fun layup, Elon Musk, I'm having sex. Oh, he's a weird guy. At least he's honest. Mm. Hollywood Light has reached out to Elon, Sergey, and Nicole's reps for comment, but have yet to hear back. I don't think they're going to respond. Closing today with Angelina Jolie, as she has won the legal battle against her ex-husband, Brad Pitt. Uh, of course she was going to win. <sighs> Whatever. Poor Brad Pitt. He can't catch a break, man. Hey guys, it's Allie for Hollywood Life with your music roundup, and let's kick today off with Kid Cudi and the wild event that took place at Rolling Loud this weekend in my Oh, all the Kanye kiss ass fans. Look at me, I'm being violent. You're all losers. Miami. The rapper dramatically walked off stage halfway mm. through his headlining performance after people from the crowd yeah. threw water bottles and other debris at him. In video footage, which can be seen on Hollywood Life. And then every, all the like Kanye fans the next day on Twitter, because I'm sitting there doing my 4 a.m. to 4 p.m. job in Tampa radio, and I'm just reading Twitter. Everyone's like, oh, Kid Cody's a pussy for leaving. You're throwing things at him. Cuddy can be seen at his microphone stand singing right before a water bottle hit him in the face. And to Got it. make things even more awkward, what? shortly afterwards, Kanye what? West, who dropped out of the event less than a week earlier, made a surprise appearance during Lil Durk's set. That's called a bait and switch on Kid Cuddy if I've ever seen one. 
I wonder what Gay's reaction to Kid Cudi's short-lived performance was. It was almost scripted, bro. They're going to piss off Kid Cudi, so then Kanye comes out. Switching gears. It doesn't look as crazy. To Jennifer Lopez because she is stripping down for her 53rd birthday. The newly Hell yeah, keep doing her whatever you do to look young, J-Lo. It's not attractive to me, but you look good. Uh, you look too, like, young, but you're, like, 53. Newlywed superstar posed completely nude in a stunning new portrait by Daniela Midenge. Where's the nip, though? If there's no nip, it's not that nude. For People Magazine to celebrate her special day. Jennifer was looking ultra fit as yeah. she posed with one knee bent while strategically balancing her arm on a white cube. Whatever. Now, this image is part of a new campaign for her latest J-Lo Beauty launch, Got dubbed J-Lo Body. Well, if J-Lo Body makes me... Everything's got her name on it. Like, we get it. You're Jennifer Lopez. Not everything needs to have your name on it. J-Lo, j -Lo. Oh, God. Go away. You're like an STD. Look that good at that age? Then yeah. I might as well just go pick it up right now. Ah, uh, you do that and wonder why everyone thinks you're like every other basic girl in L.A. Anyways, head on over to HollywoodLife.com to check out those photos. Whatever. Okay, and now let's talk about Nick Jonas and Priyanka Chopra expanding their family. Hollywood Life has learned exclusively from multiple sources that the couple has already discussed having more kids together. That's good. <laughs> They're a weird couple, man. That's an interesting couple. I'm not saying I didn't enjoy my time hooking up with older women that I don't really like talking about. Shut up! Oh, uh, yeah, I was just like, uh... Like to marry one man, it's on a new level. I'm setting out to eat nothing but Taco Bell for 30 days straight to see if it's possible to actually become healthier while doing it. Sam, you can become healthier, man, but you're gonna be on the bathroom, you're gonna be having gas all day long. Speaking of gas. Some good news for drivers this morning as you head off to work or maybe hopefully you're going on vacation. Gas prices are falling. According yeah. to AAA, the national average this morning, $4.36 for gallon. Woo, we went down 10 cents. Hell yeah, dude. Let's party. Let's have a great time. <laughs> now, if it went down a dollar, maybe I would go woo, but it went down 15 cents. We are so brainwashed by the media. We are all peasants on this rock that's floating in the universe. On a regular, that's 16 cents lower than one week ago, and it's yeah. about 55 cents lower than it was a month ago. Yeah. And more good news, experts say you will continue to see gas prices fall in the coming weeks. Oh, it's going to go down to 3.95. Huh? If you don't see the trend, man, of the rich and elite doing whatever the hell they want, Jolene Maxwell getting a fancy prison. If you don't see the rich and elite, like the liberals protecting Hunter Biden and the Republicans protecting Donald Trump, if you don't see how the elite always win, then you're never going to get by in this country. Then you're never going to get by in this world. When you admit that the rich and elite will always be around and you just do your thing and you realize that they think they are wonderful, the rich and elite. Oh, we're so amazing. You have as much time as any of us on this planet. And honestly, with the amount of cocaine you're doing, I'm going to live longer. Maybe. I don't know. Happy hour. Happy hour. Money. And like that, he's gone. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over. Happy hour is now over.